All right. Well, welcome. Today we're going to begin a presentation by uh, yours truly. We're going to be talking a little bit about procurement. Give, I'm going to give a little background on the process, and we're going to dive into a few examples. So here we go. So procurement overview. Pretty much it's uh, related to obtaining goods and services from outside companies as a general way to uh, just explain the process. Uh, the PMI book uh, breaks it down into three processes. You have the planning procurement, you conduct the procurement, and then you control it. I know in the example here we have a fourth phase, uh, closed procurements. Um, you can just categorize this as you're going you're to close out every aspect of all the different processes within project management. So planning, you know, you have to determine uh, what to purchase or acquire and determine when and how. Um, we're going to get in a few more details on uh, the next few slides of each of the three main phases. So phase one, plan procurement. <clears throat> so the buyer is the one with all the responsibilities in this phase. Uh, they have to receive the requirements from stakeholders in order, you know, to know what they're going to be doing. They need to create a procurement statement of work. Uh, they need to uh, prepare the templates, NDAs for the vendors to respond to. Create bid documents such as requests for bid, requests for proposals, requests for intents, and requests for <sighs> RFQ is eluding me right now. But hey, so then once these are all created and selected, you need to send these out to the vendors to get results back. So here is uh, just a basic template I got off Google showing uh, a request for a proposal. You know, you have to be giving just basic overview, your dates of when this work needs to be started and completed, background, expectations, mentor requirements, pricing, and submission guidelines, and goes a little bit more in detail further. So now, conduct procurements, phase two. <clears throat> so the vendors will respond to uh, the request for the bids. Ah, Q, quote, request for quote, or proposal. The buyer will benchmark the received proposal, quotes, and bids. And benchmark pretty much is a, a way to get an outside uh, perspective on the quality or for the value of the work from someone else that is not a vendor. Uh, so, and then one of the main uh, important things is the buyer will use a weighted criteria techniques to evaluate the proposals and bids. This is how you choose who you're going to be selecting to do the work for you. Once the vendor, and then once you select the vendor, you're going to be negotiating the contract, and then you're going to execute it. Everyone's going to sign it, come to an agreement. So here's uh, just a little, I guess you can call it a flow chart of benchmarking. Benchmarking value cycle is what they called this. So now buyer's vendor selection criteria. So these are some of the things that uh, the buyers would have in their selection criteria to determine Who's the best fit? We have total cost of ownership, quality of goods, services, proposed technical performance, financial stability, cost of training, qualifications of the individuals within the company, risk assessment of the proposed solutions, availability and cost of technical support, past performance, and the cost and price. You can't forget about the cost and price because that's the, the bottom line. Well, not the bottom line, all these together is how you're going to come to uh, you know selection. So right here, we're going to have a little sample. <clears throat> I'm just going to switch over to this window here. So this is some selection criteria from five vendors. So, so these are some basic questions here that would be asked. How many years have been in business? Are you a licensed general contractor? If yes, put your contractor number, blah, 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 blah. So these are a lot of the different questions that are asked and then based off here uh, we'll make a decision so the colors you see here yellow and green and red <clears throat> red obviously can never really mean a good thing for instance to this question um, if no how much time can you when would it take you to get a license so when you see red right here they do have a license but it's currently suspended as a 115 18 so that's red that's an automatic no-go all these vendors with no highlighting represents people that did not stick out. <clears throat> the green and the yellow are 
pretty much between the two clients. Green's obviously very well, and yellow is, yeah. So we have listing major clients and the service station filling markets to see if, you know, if there's any overlap with clients we've worked with. Um, do they have safety certifications? That's pretty much a requirement. Have you constructed and operating gasoline retail stations? If someone put no, they're kind of out of their league, but they probably wouldn't be bidding on the project anyways, if that was the case. So, <clears throat> so we just have a few more other qualification criteria, their bonding capacity, the value of your work presently bonded, available bonding capacity. The bonding information is key because if they don't have that insurance policy for a large number, it's not going to really make the buyer too comfortable selecting the vendor. So we have current limits insurance carried. So, so that's enough here on the selection criteria. Let's moving on. <clears throat> so phase three, control procurements. So once uh, the contract has been executed and works and restarted, um, so you just got to, the buyer has to make sure that the terms and the conditions of the contract are being maintained by both parties. You got to keep track of vendor payments for the work. Verified vendor performs the agreed upon performance reports. You got to make sure to give me status updates uh, about their milestones and where they are with their work. Conduct inspections and audits. It's two difference. Uh, the differences between two inspections is on the product. Audits are on the process. So then close contract after finished work has been agreed to have followed the T's and C's. So that's once it's already been finished. All right. So now <clears throat> there's a bunch of different types of contracts. Very, there's a large selection of them. The main one that most people go with are fixed fee. Within the contracts, you have numerous, numerous terms and conditions. So out of contracts, we have uh, there's three overall types, cost reimbursable, time and material, fixed fee. Time and material is the pretty much the best of both worlds. It's a little bit of the fixed fee and the cost reimbursable. Types of cost reimbursables, we have cost plus fixed fee, incentive with incentives and awards, um, percentage of costs. <clears throat> with the fixed fees, you have a firm fixed or fixed price fixed fee with incentives and awards as well to both of those. So here's a quick uh, sample contract that is, so this here, well, doesn't want to go full screen. Well, so this was prepared by the engineers joint contract documents committee and issued and published jointly by the ACC. National Society of Professional Engineers, and the American Society of Civil Engineers. So just go down here. I've highlighted some areas of uh, interest. <clears throat> so here, well, I just blacked out the name of who this client was and the owner. But <clears throat> so your overall work, what are you doing? The project, the project in which the work under the contract documents may be the whole or only part only or only a part is generally described as follows. This isn't a completely fold out contract, but so we have the engineer who's done it. Contract times, you have your timelines. And so time of the essence, let's see, we have a contract price. How much is this going to cost? What are we agreeing to? And the unit price work. Payment procedures, how and when uh, is the buyer going to pay the vendor? <clears throat> Contractor representations. In order to induce owner to enter into this agree agreement, contractor makes the following representations, such as contractors examine and carefully study the contract documents and other related data identified in the bidding documents. So. And then we have all of our contract documents. We have this agreement, what we're looking at, the performance bond, payment bond, general conditions, which we will get to in a second, and all the exhibits, any changes, addendum. Oh no, sorry, I misread that. That said addendum. So our terms, this is one key portion of a contract. 
there's certain words that are being used and everyone has to understand and know what these terms mean. Assignment of contracts, assessors and assigns, severability. So, ooh, I did not take that out. But anyways, no one saw that. So let's move in on here. Terms and conditions. So you have a liquidation clause, escalator clause, force majeure, liability waiver, and a change clause. Force majeure is something to where it's out of control of both parties and um, it's neither the one's fault, such as natural disasters and what forth and what so forth. So examples of terms and conditions. I have an example here, general conditions. This is performed by the same people as well for the same contract. So I highlighted, we're just gonna go through the table of contents because this is about 30 pages. So we have our uh, definitions and terminology again, we often be on the same page. We have our preliminary matters, contract documents, availability of lands, subsurface and physical conditions, hazardous environmental conditions, bonds and insurance, very important, and the contractor's responsibilities. Yeah, that's a long one. It's a pretty long section, Article 6. And owner's responsibilities, engineer status screening construction. Yeah, cost of work, change of the contract price, change of contract times, removal acceptance or removal or acceptance of defective work. Dispute resolution, what happens in certain scenarios? Methods and procedures, how are we gonna deal with this? So that is just a little, little background on that. And yeah, the terms, again, very, very important. What does it mean when you say the contract price? What does it mean, say an agreement, application for payment? Everyone has to understand these terms. So moving forth. <clears throat> so now, this example is uh, performance-based contracting right so what is performance-based contracting it's uh it is a results oriented contracting method that focuses on the outputs quality or outcomes that may tie at least a portion of the contractor's payment contract extensions or contract renewals to the achievement of specific measurable standards and requirements what is this primary goal of this you got to get the best value what is the best value the outcome of any acquisition that ensures customer that ensures customer needs are met in the most effective, timely, and economical manner. So that actually was the rest of, that is my project. I am way over in time, I apologize about that. But this is just a little sample procurement. This is a pretty big process. It's a very important process. Uh, but thank you for watching and hope you guys have a good day. Cheers.